Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 1 Practice Problems. This is Problem 5, Part 3, and we are looking at a chunk of pseudocode here, which I will come back to. And we're told that this directed graph given as input uses an adjacency list representation, as does the algorithm itself. And we're given no further information about unknown computation. So unknown computation is called a couple of times. We don't know anything more about it. Um, so this is probably the most important part of this problem. Since we don't know anything more about unknown computation, all we know is that it takes at least constant time. So that line takes at least constant time. Uh, could it take v squared time? Could it take v cubed time? Could it take e to the 10th time? Could it take v raised to the e time? Sure, it could take any of those. We don't know what the computation is. So we're supposed to give a good asymptotic lower bound on the runtime of the algorithm in terms of the number of nodes and edges, and briefly justify our bound by annotating the code above. And then it says the same bound is correct for both best and worst cases. And that is wrong. That is just outright wrong. Sorry about that. This is a lesson about practice problems versus exam problems. We do try to vet the real exam problems much more carefully than the practice problems. Uh, this is a very complex problem. It looks like it's going to be a problem like this, where we're going to iterate over all of the edges in an adjacency list representation of a graph. And in that problem, at first you might think, oh, it's hard to tell how many edges we're going through for a given vertex because some vertices are adjacent to more edges and some vertices are adjacent to fewer edges. And it, that's true. It is hard to tell how many edges you're going through on a particular vertex. That can vary from graph to graph. But the total number of edges in all of these lists for every vertex, that total is always the number of edges. Uh, or with the books representation, where it actually has one list for incoming edges and one list for outgoing edges, it's twice the number of edges in a directed graph. And it's also twice the number of edges in an undirected graph. Uh, but still, asymptotically, it's the number of edges. But that's not what's going on here. We, we have one iteration for each edge here. So the number of iterations is e here, because we're going through each edge. And then we go through each edge incident on u and each edge incident on v. So we're actually going to iterate through all of the edges incident on u. That sounds good, but this loop is not over the vertices. If this were over the vertices, no problem. The total number of iterations of this loop would be e. And the total number of iterations in this loop would be e. Uh, that's the total number of iterations, not the number of iterations per iteration of the outer loop. But that's not what's happening. We are iterating over edges in the outer loop. So we may hit u many, many times. Uh, in this outer loop over many different iterations. In particular, the longer this list is, the more times we'll hit the list. So we're going to end up with something like the sum over all of the lists in our adjacency list of the length of that list squared or something like that. Um, so it's just kind of an ugly problem. I, I will go as far as saying uh, we can certainly give an omega bound of e because uh, this runs e iterations. So this is an omega bound, no question about it. Just running this loop e iterations takes e time. Um, it's generally going to be more expensive than that. Uh, how much more expensive will it be? I mean, will it be e squared? No. No, in general, it will not be e squared. We can, for example, uh, have a perfect matching where we have a whole bunch of edges, but each node only has one edge incident on it. And so this inner loop, each of these inner loops will run once per edge, and that's all. Uh, so that's just going to take omega e time. Um, could it be e squared? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, we could have. Uh, oh, let's see, um, we could have a complete graph. Uh, in a complete graph, for every vertex, we're going to run this loop uh, v minus 1 times. Okay, And we'll have e edges, so that'll be actually e times v. So for a complete graph, 
will run e times through this loop, and every iteration through that loop will run v times through each of these, so we'll end up with e times v, and remember e is just v squared, so this is going to be, this is theta, e times v, ah, uh, sorry, not theta, we're not making a theta bound, we're only making an omega bound because we don't know, again, how long the unknown computation takes. So this would be omega v cubed, actually. Not as large as e squared, but still v cubed. Fairly expensive. That's about all I want to say about this problem. It's a broken problem. My apologies.